Hello everyone, here's a really quick video um, about item analysis in Eduphoria so that you can look up your SPA scores and be ready when you go to your uh, tech academies. So I've actually logged in as a teacher so we'll have some live data to look at. First thing you'll want to do is uh, click on the Aware tab. And when you get to the Aware tabs, a couple things you could do. You could create a new data view. Uh, it's probably just as easy to go to Quick Views. And we're going to look for, uh, it says CBA here, but it should be SBA 2016-17. We'll look at ninth grade. We'll take a look at this math test right here. We're just drilling down until we get to the test. Once we click on the test, it'll populate over here. So this might look a little different than what you see on your tests. Obviously, this particular test was given uh, at two different campuses. Uh, if I wanted to see students, I could double click on either one of these headings and I would get all the students at that school that took the test. And that would probably look more like what your class looks like and what you see um, as, a, as a teacher. Um, the other thing you could do to get the same uh, view is you could come over here and you could click on the individual students and that would uh, basically give you the same effect. I'm not going to do that for this video because I don't want students individual scores out on a video. All we're really looking for is how to create this item analysis report and all you have to do is you come up into this uh, report window right here it says student scores. You're going to click on the drop down menu and you are looking for um, the item analysis report or student individual responses report. So we're going to click on the student individual responses and watch what happens. So immediately it uh, changes views on us and we get uh, same test 16, 17, ninth grade algebra. We get all the responses and what we have here in this row is the question number. So this would be question number one, question number two, question number three. Below that we have the reporting categories. Below that we have the readiness and the supporting standards. And then below that we have the process standards. And so the way you would want to read this for your uh, data meeting is the best thing to do, uh, you can download this whole report by going over here clicking print and exporting to Excel. And you can certainly do that <clears throat> and then change these colors if you want to but what most teachers and what I find helpful is I just take a blank copy of the test booklet and I actually just write down by question number one I want to know what the readiness and the uh, supporting standards were associated with that question what was the process standard associated with that question and you probably already have done that once um, before you gave the test when you were when you were planning but it's really uh, instructive to go back and to be able to see that again and so you can either pull out that copy and just add these numbers to it or if for some reason that got away from you or you didn't do that uh, now is a good time to inform yourself on what does the A1B process standard look like when it's being tested and so all I'm interested in is uh, for our purposes today, I'm just going to concentrate on uh, Splendor High School and look at these numbers right here. But um, you would see your class, okay? It wouldn't break it up by each individual student. Now, you could do that, um, but that really doesn't help you very much in terms of data. So almost every question has... Uh, at least four responses. Some of these you'll see they probably had to uh, come up with the number on their own and uh, these were write-in responses here and basically the way this works is um, the green square is going to be the uh, correct answer and then it's just going to tell you what percentage of students uh, selected the correct answer and then what percentage of students selected each distractor. All right, and so you're going to want to write that, uh, write that down in the test booklet by each question. Um, so for number two, I would write down uh, right next to the uh, 
question to the stem or distractor H 54.7 percent and then I would do that for each one of those and well they'll probably talk a little more in your uh, in your TEKS Academy or your data meetings but you'll you'll notice you kind of start to see a pattern if um, trying to find one here So like 35% of the kids really liked H here. That's a pretty significant number. So that tells me that there's something about H that they really, really liked. Um, whereas over here, 39% uh, liked F, 29% liked G, about 15% liked H, only 12% got it right. That tells me that conceptually they don't really know what's going on at all here. They're having a lot of trouble with this concept. Um, maybe one like this, uh, they've got the concept down, but they're having a procedural issue because the numbers are a little tighter or, or maybe the number of incorrect answers. Uh, here's a good example. The number of incorrect answers, they really liked D. So I would look at this distractor and figure out what it is about that distractor that they really liked. My guess is uh, these two are very close. A and D might be very close. And uh, students just got confused about which one. They know the concept here, uh, but they're just struggling with the procedure. As opposed to one over here where they're kind of all over the board. Or actually, I think it was this one where they're all over the board and you really don't see a pattern at all. But that's it. That's how you click on, uh, or that's how you get your individual response data. You can just come up here and, and click in this window, and uh, you can get that for your test. And you just do that for every problem.